Have you been bitten by the raptor? We're going old school. Way, way back. Prehistoric even. Don't be throwing shade at the raptor. But everything's got a downside. Stay tuned to the end. We're going to tell you why the raptor is not as new as you think. A modern block with a prehistoric name. Hi, I'm Stuart. And I'm Jeff. And this is Walk Around the Block. And we're here today to talk about the Raptor. Oh, great acronym. Yeah, yeah. I don't. It's... Blocks always work if they've got a good acronym. I, I, that's the that's... first rule of regional anesthesia. <laughs> Come it's... up with a good acronym. Yeah. <laughs> IPAC, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, so the, rap, the retroclavicular approach to the infraclavicular region or the retroclavicular block. So the idea behind this one is that you're approaching the brachial plexus of the infraclavicular fossa behind the clavicle, not in front of it. And why would you do that? A lot of the patients who have got other medical problems, comorbidities come in, um, and they come in for you know, vascular access surgery, and if the patient um, weighs 400 pounds or so, that's a really challenging infraclavicular block. Yeah. Do you have any tips for really deep infraclaviculars? Uh, well, we use, yeah, it's hard. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. we will often pull out the curve probe mm -hmm. um, rather than the cur than the linear uh, transducer. Um, but we'll be pretty quick to switch to, I and mean, once you get that image, the problem then is the approach. So if yeah. you're doing traditional infraclavicular, you're going so steep and deep, you're, you're not going to see your needle all that well. So um, the other way, the other use case for the raptor is uh, in trauma. So when a patient can't really move their arm out that much. Mm -hmm. um, broken and, elbow, broken humerus, yeah, yeah. Uh, distal humerus, this forearm, bad forearm fracture. Yeah, but they've got a fairly good superglavicular fossa. We'll often do the raptor for that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, the retroclavicular approach yeah. to the plexus. In the infraclavicular region. Yeah, and and the, the advantages um, that we've seen are number one, your needle is coming parallel to the probe surface, so as soon as it comes through the shadow of the clavicle, which admittedly is a bit of a leap of faith, but you're in parallel to the to the floor, you see your needle. It just lights up like day, and then you just guide it to right that six o'clock position behind the artery, and uh, and you're all good. The other advantage is that you tend to avoid the uh, some of the vasculature of the superficial chest muscles, like the cephalic vein and the acromial branch to the acromial clavicular artery. Mm -hmm. um, so, a couple of a couple of advantages. Are there downsides to the raptor? Um, well, the, the big one I think is actually needle insertion. You could hit a very close to the suprascapular nerve as it courses across the, the shoulder on the way to the scapula. That's, that's I've heard that. Um, yeah, the publication said, oh, you know, the needle can be close. Um, uh, there's two solutions to this. Yeah. One, I put the ultrasound probe behind the clavicle to find the nerve, make sure my needle's not going through it, and then bring the probe down to the, the position for the block. That's one. The other solution? Ner good old nerve simulation. I mean, I think uh, it's cheap, easy, and gives you a lot of information. So we'll, when doing a raptor, we'll always put nerve simulation on just to uh, be able to predict if you are getting close to that suprascapular nerve, you'll, you'll see a, a sort of a, this is, the, this is my dance move, uh, infraspinatus, supraspinatus twitch. Uh, <laughs> And the patient, which might warn you of that you're, yeah. you're too close to the nerve. But and, and honestly, I do it every time, and I have yet to see it. You you've yet to see the suprascapular nerve being stimulated. So right. the the paper that criticised it and said, "Oh, this is potentially difficult," came out so early. I cannot believe that the critics were were experts. So this is if you look at like the time of the block coming out. And the publication of the criticism that had to be submitted six months before that, nobody could have really been an expert with this. So it's interesting to see a year or two later, you saying with the stimulator on, 
Um, I have to say, I don't use a stimulator that often in my regional anesthesia practice anymore. Um, that's another show. Yeah. Nerve injury, that's one of your favourite topics. It is, um, yeah. But... Uh, Stay tuned know, for that program. Bad stew, bad stew. Don't use the nerve stimulation very often. But um, it, this is one a great idea that you came up with and I think makes this much safer. Um, and to be fair, that, that paper... They, where they did the cadaver dissection. It was a cada- cadaveric study. So they were thinking, trying to prove the point that it could be close. And mm-hmm. and yeah. it, does, it doesn't... I, I get their dissections and I get the I get the anatomical relationships, but I just don't see it clinically. Mm-hmm. Um, so for what it's worth. The other thing the paper said, there are some veins back there, but where are there some veins? And, I, you know, as I aspirate in the way in, I'm, I've yet to, mm-hmm. you know... Yeah. have you know, a positive aspiration. Although every case of local anaesthetic toxicity starts with a what classic line? After careful negative aspiration. <laughs> so maybe I have got in them and I just have not, uh, not hit them. Right. Um, but this is all modern, this is ultrasound. And I think, and here's the big deal, if you're old enough or have little enough hair as I have, you remember a case series of 1,001 subclavian perivascular blocks was published. Ah, oh, the good old days. 1,001, all done with nerve stimulation and with subclavian perivascular. Nobody would do a supraclavicular nerve block before ultrasound. The supraclavicular was fraught with danger. You're aiming a needle right at the dome of the pleura. No bueno, okay? So what we do, the description was for a subclavian perivascular. And you aimed your needle lateral to the the first rib and you went behind the clavicle, deep behind the clavicle with your needle and this was standard practice. So it's interesting, this is now not standard practice for the raptor, yet it was standard practice before ultrasound for a subclavian perivascular. So I just dropped some historical knowledge. I love that, yeah. Good to be a dinosaur. It's a a nugget right there. Especially a velociraptor. (laughs) See what I did there? <laughs> so tell us your thoughts on the Raptor. Do you use it? Do you take use of it, makes you make use of its advantages? Do you worry about some of the purported downsides of the Raptor? And I, I find the first two or three times people do it, they are all over the place in terms of landmarks. Yeah. Yeah, the one the one technical tip I will I will share that, that seems to make a difference with our trainees is you gotta kinda get back far enough um, you know, behind the clavicle to make that trajectory. So people start mm-hmm. a bit too close to the clavicle and then have to make sort of a, a U-shaped curve to get underneath there. Mm-hmm. So, um, and one, one group of patients I found it not useful in are people with COPD where their clavicles come up and back. Well, oh. once, you, once you drop the lung, then you can just make that... No, that's not where you were... No, that's not what I was going oh. at. But actually, the, the clavicle's high actually makes it gives you less room to yeah. so that makes the COPD where they're trapping and pursed lips and stuff that makes it more difficult I found to get that that's one group I found difficult it's actually in those cases it's easier to do a traditional they're often very skinny those patients as well mind you yeah mm-hmm. yeah you do see people on the street and say that wouldn't be a good raptor um, <laughs> they somehow find it weird when I say that to them but yeah okay <laughs> As long as you wear a mask and stay three feet, uh, yeah. six feet, sorry. Uh, yeah. Any other uh, Raptor comments? No, it's worked well for us. Uh, we put catheters back there all the time. Um, and it's, been, it's one of our main go-to upper limb blocks. Okay. Um, not much on YouTube about it in terms of teaching. Uh, have a search. There yeah. might be, um, but certainly if you meet us at a workshop, uh, happy to teach the approach for that. Um, so please look us up. Um, we might even make a video of how to um, if anybody wants to see that. 